Oh, hello there. I'm Bill Chen. I'm Nimikong. I'm Van Chan. In this class, I'll read to all of you. Chapter 5, Section 1 of the Picture of Dorian Gray. Ass. Ah. The Picture of Dorian Gray. Oscar Wilder. Chapter 5, Section 1. Other. Although. I am so happy, whispered the gull, burying her face in the lap of the faded, tired looking Winhu, with back turned to the shrill intrusive light, was sitting in the one arm chair that their dingy sitting room contained. I am so happy, she repeated. And you must be happy. Mice. Vane winced and put her thin. The smart whitened hands on her daughter's head. Happy she called. I am only happy. They will. When I see you act. You must not think of anything but your acting. Waste it. Isaacs has been very good to us. The girl looked up and pouted. Money. Well, there, she cried. What does money matter? Wist it. Isaacs has advanced his fifty pounds to pay off our debts and to get a proper outfit for James. You must not forget that. Devil. Fifty pounds is a very large sum. Wist it. He is not a gentleman. Although. And I hate the way he talks to me, said the girl. Rising to her feet and going over to the window. I don't know how we could manage without him, said the elder woman querulously. Sybil Vane tossed her head and laughed. We don't want him anymore. Well there. Prince Charming rules life for us now. Then she paused. A rush in her blood and dulled her cheeks. Quick breath parted the petals of her lips. They trembled. Some southern wind of passion swept over her and stirred the dainty folds of her. Thurus. I love him, she said simply. Foolish child. Foolish child. Was the prayer phrase flung in and sir? The waving of crooked. False child fingers gave great weakness to the words. The girl laughed again. The joy of a caged bird was in her voice. Her eyes caught the melody and echoed it in radiance. Then closed for a moment. As though tied their secret. When they opened. The mist of a dream had passed across them. Then lipped wisdom spoke at her from the worn chair. Hinted at prudence. Quoted from that book of Cardus whose author apes the name of common sense. She did not listen. She was free in her prison of passion. Her prince. Prince Charming. Was with her. She had called on memory to remake him. She had set her soul to search for him. And it had brought him back. His kiss burned again upon her mouth. Her eyelids were warm with his breath. Then wisdom altered its method and spoke of his spiel and discovery. This young man might be rich. If so, marriage should be thought of. Against the shill of her broke the waves of worldly cunning. The eyes of crash shot by her. She saw the thin lips moving. And smiled. Suddenly she felt the need to speak. The wordy silence troubled her. Mother. Mother, she cried. 
Why does he love me so much? I know why I love him. I love him because he is like what love and self should be. But what does he see in me? I am not worthy of him. And yet why? I cannot tell for I feel so much beneath him. I don't feel humble. I feel proud. Terribly proud. Although. Though the woman grew pale beneath the coarse powder that dove her cheeks. And her dry lips twitched with a spasm of pain. Sybil rushed to her. Flung her arms round her neck. And kissed her. Forgive me. While there. I know it pains you to talk about our father. But it only pains you because you loved so much. Don't look so sad. I am as happy today as you were 20 years ago. Ah. My child. You are for Tian to think of feeling in love. Besides. What do you know of this young man? You don't even know his name. The whole thing is most inconvenient. And really. When James is going away to Australia. And I have so much to think of. I must say that you should have shown more consideration. However. As I said before. Ah. Although. Although. My ace. Fing glanced at her. And with one of those was theatrical gestures that so often become a mode of second nature to a stage player. Clasped her in her arms. At this moment. The door opened and a young lad with rough brown hair came into the room. He was thick set of figure. And sands and feet were large and somewhat clumsy in movement. He was not so finely bred as his sister. One would hardly have guessed the close relationship that existed between them. Mice. Anne fixed her eyes on him and intensified her smile. She mentally elevated her son to the dignity of an audience. She felt sure that the tableau was interesting. You might keep some of your kisses for me. They will. I think said the lad with a good natured grumble. Ah. But you don't like being kissed. Shin, she cried. You are a dreadful old bear. And she ran across the room and hugged him. James Vane looked into his sister's face with tenderness. I want you to come out with me for a walk. Devil. I don't suppose I shall ever see this horse again. My son. Don't say such dreadful things, Mama my Vane, taking up a total theatrical. Dressed with a sigh and beginning to patch it. She felt a little disappointed that he had not joined the group. It would have increased the theatrical picturesqueness of the situation. To be continued.